Hi there, and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Device ID Plus, a new free offering from Shape Security, which is now part of the greater F5 family. So you may be asking, what is Device ID Plus and why should I care? Well, if you think about it, Device ID is exactly that. It's a way to uniquely identify machines. And so if we look at a particular scenario, such as this one here where we have friends inside of a coffee shop accessing their applications, could be banking applications, it could be network applications inside the corporate enterprise, right? And so if we're thinking about this from a security perspective, how are we to ensure that a user is actually that user, they are, they are who they say they are, and they're coming from a machine that we've either authorized or maybe we've kind of soft authorized, right? It's a known device to us. How, so how do, we, how do we correlate those two? And then what kind of decisions can, we, can be made from that correlation? And so if you think about it as a quick example would be maybe your organization wants to lock down a specific user, such as this lady here laughing on the left, with her specific corporate laptop. And only she can use this laptop to log into their applications. And so if you think about it, your organization array may be doing some of this. You might be using machine certs. You may be using an agent that checks maybe a, a registry file, reg key. You may be doing a lot of that other stuff that is great and works. However, there are still ways around it and sometimes it's a bit cumbersome where it creates friction between the user and the application. And in this day of, of information now, we certainly don't want friction. And so Device ID Plus is a way to identify that machine very, very quietly without any friction to the user. Unless they're coming from a device that they're not authorized to use and you want to mitigate or maybe do something. And so a good example here is a cell phone. So I recently upgraded my cell phone. And when I tried to log into the applications I normally log into, I was prompted with an alert that said, we're sorry, we don't recognize this device you're logging in from. Please enter the six digit pin or token that we sent to your email on file. Enter it, click here to continue. And so I would log into my email, get the PIN. I would log into the email because I should be the only one authorized for that email, right? And so the application or the company can somewhat determine that I am who I say I am if I have access to that PIN. And so I enter the PIN and boom, I'm, I'm logged into the application. A lot of times the company might decide to catalog or put that machine device ID fingerprint into their database. Sometimes they won't. It's all up to the logic that's built into the application. And so really, that's what device ID is. It's a way to uniquely identify a machine. And so if we were to think about it from a security perspective, think about how powerful it would be to correlate and match a specific user, such as these people here, if we could uniquely identify them and then uniquely identify their machines, how powerful would that be for your organization's security? Pretty powerful. And so let's talk about how this is done. And every company does, this, uh, does it a little different. And by the way, this is absolutely free. This type of software or technology to develop would probably cost a company upwards of a couple hundred thousand dollars, give or take, little less, little more, depending on how sophisticated you want it to be. And so you'd have to hire a team of developers. You'd have to maintain that code. There's a lot of overhead. This is free. Again, Shape Security is giving this away as a free tool for you to use. And anyone can use it. You don't even have to have a big IP to use this. And we're going to show you here just how that's done. And so very high level, this is how it's done. It's done through JavaScript. So there are two prereqs to get this working in your, in your environment. One, you've got to have JavaScript enabled. 
on your machines. And number two, you have to have outbound access to the Shape Device ID Plus service. So high level, this is what happens. A user on their laptop logs into your portal or to an application in your network. JavaScript is then immediately injected into their browser. They don't know what's happening behind the scenes. That JavaScript then calls out to the, to the device ID plus service and delivers some information about that user's machine. And it's all sorts of different information. Uh, there's two cookies, two hashes that are delivered back. And they call these re residual and they call these an attribute cookie. Now, I'm not going to get into the technical details of this. Of this. There's a follow-up video where I go into the technical aspects of all of this, including how to deploy and configure this on a big IP. So you want to view that. That's in the description below. That's the follow-up video to this high-level overview. And so the Shape service then delivers that payload, that fingerprint, back to the browser, the client, and then the client continues on to the origin server, which is right above my head. And that could be an application, or it could be the big IP. And then from there, you can do whatever you want with those cookies, right? Maybe you want to put them in the database and match them with the user. Maybe you just want to send them to your SIM and use them for analytic purpose, right? To maybe catalog different machine IDs coming in from different locations and times a day. And maybe you want to do some analytics and to show that a particular machine ID is being logged in with multiple users tens, twenties, thirties of users, unique users, and that might be a problem, right? So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this, and it's all free. So what are, they, what are we collecting? What is shape collecting? There's no PII being collected here. It, it, it's, just, it's using JavaScript. So it's collecting things about your browser. It's collecting things like fonts. It's collecting things like your, your screen resolution. Also, things about your hardware, right? So maybe the model and type of hardware you're on, what kind, what latest version of OS you're running, et cetera, et cetera. Even IP address and geolocation and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that go in there. It's a secret sauce. No company is ever going to tell you everything they put in it because if they did that, bad guys would then be able to reverse engineer and get around protections like this. So at at the very high level, lots is being collected, none of it's PEI, and there's no security concerns around that. Okay, so how do you sign up for this free service? And again, it's absolutely free, which is amazing. Well, you go to the portal, and I have the link down below in the description. This is Portal Cloud Service. It's F5's cloud service portal where you can go and sign up for all sorts of SaaS type applications. Uh, F5 has come quite a long way in our SaaS application offerings. You can see here we've got DNS, we've got uh, global DNS, we have Essential App Protect, which is a, a, a easy button web application firewall. We've got Beacon, which is a visibility and analytics platform. And of course, we have Device ID, which is right there. And it says free, right? So you sign up for this, you click on it, you subscribe. It just takes an email and a password to create an account. And it's going to walk you through setting it up. You can deploy it with just the JavaScript, so you don't need a big IP. You can put this right on your application. Give it to your developers. They put it into their HTML uh, and, and insert that JavaScript into their page, and boom, you're going to start getting that hash cookie and unique device ID. And they would have to figure out the logic on what you want to do with it, send a security team, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to show you in the demo here how the big IP handles it without having a developer in the mix. OK, so this isn't ready yet, but this is going to be really cool and also part of the free offering. This is the dashboard that's going to be available in January for this service. So it gives you some insights and analytics about what's going on with your network, what's connecting. And as you can see here, we have a, an example of 803,000 devices detected on 27 URLs during the previous week. You can also see like user agents, a a ASNS per device ID, new versus returning users. So you can get a lot of really cool analytics, very useful insights right out the gate without having to configure a SIM or some kind of analytics engine on the back end. So very cool, all free. 
Okay, so enough of that. Let's jump into a quick demo and show you what this looks like. So I had a previous session open. Let's go ahead and close that. And then let's click up to open a new session. So the computer I'm logging into from here is my known device. So I have, and I'm not going to go in the weeds here, watch the, the next video to get how I do this technically and how I set this up, but I've stored this particular machine's hash or cookie device fingerprint in Active Directory. And I've got it stored in two attributes. And so what will happen is when I log in here, it's going to big IP APM access policy manager is going to query Active Directory and get those attributes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to match them. Do they match? Yes, I get access. Do they not match? Well, what do I want to do? And we're going to see what we're going to do when I try to log in from a machine that I haven't identified in a database in Active Directory. So let's click OK to proceed. And just so you know, this I, I work in a DoD space. And so DoD uses CAC or Common Access Card. It is a credit card size card that you put into a reader. It has certificates on there. DoD uses MTLS or Mutual TLS to authenticate considered much more secure than a username and password. And so when I click OK to proceed to application, a whole bunch of stuff just happened. <laughs> so all sorts of checks and balances were done, including the device ID. So it called out to the Shape service. Shape service said, yeah, he's, here's the machine, here's the cookie, here's the unique fingerprint, and it passed it back to my machine, and I passed it to the big IP. And so, what happened there was that I, I was able to, on the big IP to match it, and because it matched, I'm allowed access into the application. Very simple, right? Okay, I know that wasn't uh, mind-blowing or anything like that because you can't see what's happening behind the curtain. Again, the follow-up video, the technical video, if you want to see how that's done, you can see how it's done, how I build it. All right, so let's, let's use a different example here. Now I'm logging in from a machine that is not known, that does not match the fingerprint that I have stored in Active Directory and the fingerprint that I'm presenting from this machine. So remember, these are unique hashes. They, they very nearly impossible to duplicate. So I'm gonna log in now from, from this machine. I'm gonna log into the same site and I have I have the certificate loaded on this machine as well. So I'm presented again with this banner page that all DOD contractors, employees, servicemen, and women see when they log into a DOD machine. And so I'm gonna click OK to proceed just like I did before. I'm gonna select that certificate. I don't have a CAC, so I'm using a soft cert. So I'm gonna select that. And this time, I'm not logged directly into the application. And that's because my machine ID does not match what I have in my database, right? So as a developer, if I were to do this on an application instead of the big IP, I would have to write some logic into that application to do this for me, right? If you have a big IP, you can use Access Policy Manager to get the same type of effect or same type of mitigation that you see in an application like we did on our our cell phone, right? The example we gave on our cell phone where we logged into an application after we upgraded our device and we were prompted for additional auth. You can do that on a big IP just like this. And so you can see here I'm presented with a message. Hi there, we don't recognize this device. Please enter an additional pin or click in session. So I want to get to my app. So I'm going to click, hey, let's, let's go on. So it's asking me for my cell phone number. <clears throat> so I'm going to enter in my cell phone number. And this could be anything. This is an attribute in Active Directory. So you, this could be a 16-digit pin. It could be whatever you want. And you actually have multiple fields here to enter in if you wanted to. It's all up to you. So now I've entered in my cell phone, and I'm going to click Log On. <clears throat> and boom, I'm let into the application. What happened there was Access Policy Manager took what I entered in, matched it, queried Active Directory, queried that attribute, <clears throat> and then matched them. It matched, oh, phone numbers match? Okay, he is who he says he is. 
and it let me into the application. So that concludes our demo. That's it. I know you didn't get to see exactly what was done underneath the hood. If you'd like to see that, again, the follow-up video is down below. I'm going to get much more technical and show you how to build this in Big IP Access Policy Manager. But I think you get the idea. F5 and Shape are offering this free solution, this free capability called Device ID. And normally, this would cost companies hundreds of thousands of dollars to get started and to maintain. And F5 is offering, again, this for, to you absolutely free. So until next time, take care. Thank you.